How to add fractions using the butterfly method. Now as you know, when you add fractions, such as one half plus three fifths, I have to get a common denominator. I cannot add fractions without having my denominator. These are the numbers on the bottom. They have to be the same, okay? The numbers on the bottom have to be the same. Well, how do I get them to be the same? That's the tricky part. A long time ago, your parents probably learned to find the lowest common denominator, which is still the right way to go. But I have a simple trick to show you that might help you with your fractions, adding those fractions up. One half plus three-fifths. I'm using what's called the butterfly method. In the butterfly method, I simply cross multiply and then add and then simplify. So what does that mean? Well, my first step is to cross multiply. So I'm going to circle these two that are diagonal from each other. And then I'm going to go and circle these other two that are diagonal from each other. My pen was over there. All right. So now what I'm going to do is multiply on the diagonal. So 2 times 3 is a 6. And then, of course, I would multiply on the diagonal. 5 times 1 is 5. Now, I have my numerators. What do I do with that pesky denominator? It's very simple. 5 times 2 is 10. How does this all add up into a problem? Well, it's very easy now because I can rewrite my problem as 5 tenths, keeping that denominator, plus 6 tenths. So now my denominator is the same, and my numerators have been changed to reflect equivalent fractions. Now I can simply add. And if I add And we'll move this entire problem over. Five tenths plus six tenths. Sorry about the delay. So now I have five tenths plus six tenths and 6 plus 5 is 11. And of course I keep that denominator the same. When I'm adding fractions, my denominator has to be the same. Now, the last step is to simplify. And the 11 in the numerator is way too heavy. That means the whole thing's going to tip over. And when the whole thing tips over, I get 11 divided by 10. 11 goes in the box, 10 on the outside of the box. And now 10 goes into 11 one time. 1 times 10 is 10 with a 1 remainder. My remainder is my numerator. The outside of the box is my denominator. It's still a 10, still a 10, still a 10, still a 10. That means I have a common denominator. And my final answer is 1 and 1 tenth.